Okay, let's uh, let's talk about rope and cordage, uh, my little cordage kit. So we're gonna go over some of the options you can have for your personal cordage kit, which would include the uh, rope and cordage that you use for your pitch kit to um, put up your shelter. And then basically I guess what I mean by this is the extra cordage you carry, how much is enough, what kind should you carry, um, what types are useful, and what I've used before. So I'll, I'll reposition the camera and we'll zoom in here and I'll show you the different type of extra uh, cordage I carry. All right, so let's go over some of the extra cordage or your, your cordage kit. Now obviously, um, most of your cordage is gonna be pre-planned and you're going to take only what you need so you're not carrying extra but it's always good to have a little extra cordage because it's hard to produce that out in the woods um, or in nature uh, expediently so it'd be easier just to carry some extra cordage with you there's some several different types and then i'll show you kind of what i carry there are uh, your modern um, nylon types anywhere from the quarter inch uh, paramax rope and i have this in a, a 12 foot uh, uv fast rope configuration so I always have two fast ropes. I have this one, I have one uh, in my pocket. In my pocket. So I always have two lengths of fast rope with me. That's just kind of my standard. This would be in addition to any large uh, length, 100, 150, 250 feet of rope or cordage, uh, depending if we're doing any climbing or repelling or traversing of, of um, uh, rivers, or, hills and that sort of thing. So I'll take extra rope, but just in my personal kit, I always have two lengths of fast rope with me as part of my uniform. And then I carry some extra cordage. Uh, in my pocket, I have, again, just what I carry every day, I have 12 feet of uh, paracord. So I always have a little paracord with me. Now to um, determine what I'm going to bring, I know that I'm gonna pitch my uh, tarp in several different configurations, so I always bring a, uh, a big hank of paracord uh, for a ridge line. This is about 36, 40 feet of paracord. Works real good uh, for ridge line to set up my hammock or um, I can even cut this into smaller pieces. I usually have my little pocket fast cord uh, paracord uh, for little tasks. I don't have to keep cutting chunks off, but I always have a ridge line. Sometimes, depending on what I'm doing, I'll bring uh, a flat type of mule tape or a, a tape style rope there's about uh, 50 or 60 feet here and it's brightly colored. We'll talk about the coloration of your cordage in a minute. But set up my shelters, I'm going to need some sort of ridge line, a good length. So either a chunk of paracord or uh, some other type of uh, cordage. You could choose to go fast rope, but 50 feet, 30 feet or so of this would take up a lot of room. So paracord or um, some sort of high tensile strength tape is a better option for a uh, ridge line. So I have a ridge line and then I'm also going to take uh, just for my shelter I keep on this little carabiner I have eight other little pieces of cordage. So this is all the cordage I take for my shelter. It goes right in my shelter bag. On here I have four pre-tied uh, Prusik loops. These are just little uh, de-gutted or gutted I guess not de-gutted. Um, I took the innards out of a, a couple foot 24 inch section of paracord and just tied it into a closed loop that I use uh, for Prusix or uh, lots of uses for these but I have four of them. I generally think in terms of uh, the four corners of my tarp. And then I have four bundles of 275 cord which is like paracord but uh, smaller. 275 and I just have these folded over in a um, kind of a fast rope fold configuration about about six feet so I have four lengths of this and I can use this to tie uh, my guy lines uh, I can make closed loops they're just kind of pre-made and formed so that I have them available uh, and then I keep them organized on this little this little cheap carabiner like a key ring so there is my entire uh, cordage supply for shelter or uh, other little tasks not to mention that I have an extra fast rope in my pack. So I guess that would be my entire cordage kit. And then I carry these two on my person. So I have plenty of cordage. 
Having said all that, it's always good to have extra cordage. And there's, there's different ways you can go with it. You could stick with a theme. I've got the quarter inch Paramax, and then I get down to the, uh, the four millimeter paracord, go from six to four, and then I go down to the 275 cord and some gutted paracord, and then as an extra, I'll bring a spool of micro cord. So this is just, just over a millimeter. Um, again, we'll get to, well, let's talk about it now. So the coloration of your, your cordage. I have, I like brightly colored guy lines and Prusiks and um, ridge lines, and even my, my spare cord, I take one of these. Uh, brightly colored when we're camping people, keeps gear organized, keeps people from tripping over your guide line, guy lines, helps you um, when you're policing up your campsite to leave. Uh, make sure you don't miss any extra uh, cordage laying around. Now, if I were trying to go maybe stealth camping, I would take a more muted color of paracord for ridge line and guy outs, and I would just grab a small, like this, um, what color is it? I don't know, dark green or, or olive drab uh, micro cord, and I would just throw this in my little, what I call my cordage bag, my extra cordage. I have a little roll of flattened Gorilla Tape I throw in there too, because why not? I would just throw this extra roll of microcord in. This is 100 foot spool. Uh, it's very compact and I can use this for uh, lashings, I can use this for repairs, I can use this for uh, any cordage need I have. And it's got a, um, a pretty high tensile strength for such small cord. This is a 100 pound uh, test, so pretty good, pretty strong. And then I would just drop that in my little cord bag and then in my pitch kit, I have my little carabiner to, to pitch my tarp in multiple configurations, my main ridge line, and then I just fold up uh, a chunk of extra fast rope in case I need that. And this would be my uh, cordage kit. Now normally I keep the, the bigger chunks of my cordage in my uh, pitch kit with my stakes and my um, little um, uh, line organizers like my little figure nines or such, but that's it. That's all the cordage I would need for a typical outing and um, I can make do with uh, Different configurations of this and there are there are some other options though for cordage a lot of people are really uh, Big into if you just want to take some extra another extra hank of paracord That'd be great too, but a lot of people are into bank line uh, it Usually comes in these this is a quarter pound uh, spool I'm not sure how much is on a quarter pound spool. I'm sure it's at least 100 feet, uh, probably a little more. And uh, this is tarred bank line. This is number 36 tarred bank line. It is uh, woven, or sorry, woven. It is uh, twisted tarred bank line. So it's nylon cordage with some uh, tar. So it's impregnated. Good bank line. It's got that tar smell. It's made up of three strands that are twisted together uh, in a standard rope. So you can break this down into three strands of number 12 tarred bank line. So I recommend the 36. You can get this braided too, but then the braided, you can't deconstruct that for smaller cordage. Right? So uh, a good roll of bank line will last you a long time. It's uh, super strong, 250 pounds tensile strength. I'm not sure. We can put that in the description. You can look it up. But, uh, you know, a good roll of bank line. Uh, you can throw that in your bag. Um, I like to throw this micro cord in there just because it's, it's smaller, it's handier. And um, with the new new roll of bank line, sometimes, you know, it's good to always have that extra cordage in addition to your pitch kit and the cordage you carry on your pockets. Uh, it's always nice to have that multiple, multiple uses for that extra cordage. An old school version uh, would be, because I'm old, what we did, um, maybe when I was younger as a Cub Scout, Boy Scout, uh, or just by myself for years, I would just grab a roll of jute or sisal um, or twine from the local hardware store. Not a lot of tensile strength, obviously, uh, compared to your tarred bank line or even your micro cord, but the two advantages to just a roll of twine are, one, this is about 200 feet of twine and it costs me 97 cents. Uh, and the second benefit, it, it is a natural material. I can unwind this. I can get a little uh, little section of this and then fluff it up and make a little bird nest and then it'll catch a spark pretty easily. 
give it, if it's kept dry, but it's biodegradable. If I make a lashing of a stool or some sort of bush crafty type thing, and then we're policing camp and I lean it against a, a tree or whatever and we forget it when I leave, I don't have to turn around and drive back necessarily because a uh, summer and a winter this will, this will break down. I don't mean you should just leave it in the woods. I'm saying if you accidentally leave this uh, in the woods, it will break down. If I leave the tarred bank line or some nylon micro cord or a piece of a piece of paracord I've used as a lashing, this stuff's not going to break down. You either have to turn around, go back and get it, be ecologically responsible, or you have to, well, that's the only choice you have. I say you can wait and get it next time, but nobody wants to see your brightly colored cord or even your darker cord. Uh, these products left out in nature. So you're required to police yourself. Uh, these things don't break. The twine, while not as strong, is much cheaper, much more plentiful, and it had the, maybe the peace of mind that if you forgot this, this is going to break down in a season anyway. So uh, you maybe won't feel as bad going back. So about the same size as a roll of 36 uh, bank line. They each come with these tubes. The twine's got this little cardboard tube that I could burn. The bank line comes wrapped around this little little plastic tube, which you can find uses for. Can't think of any offhand because this is a rope video, and not a use a plastic tube video. But uh, think about that for your extra cordage. Grab a roll of twine if you're on a budget or you're um, giving into your more uh, completely organic hippie in inclinations, or Roll a tarred bank line, also pretty cheap. I think these are these are less than four dollars, uh, about four or five bucks, and they last forever. I've been using this one for a long time. Uh, even a little, you can get this from Atwood Rope Manufacturing Microcord, also made in the USA, like the bank line and the twine. So these are great options. Paracord, I get that from either Paracord Planet or Board Paracord. Both are really uh, quality outfits help you out. Get to that in a second. Uh, also under five bucks for a hundred. Now, if you're just a, a traditionalist, I guess in the bushcraft or outdoor community the last 20 or 30 years, everyone just takes a uh, paracord. You can break that down and use the inner strands. And the benefit of paracord is relatively cheap, super, super strong. Uh, Versatility is off the charts and the, the, the colors. You can get the muted, more multicam style uh, paracord or you can get the really brightly colored all the way up to that eye-watering orange microcord. And then uh, you can configure two different pitch kits when I'm going by myself, kind of stealth or solo camping, and I kind of blend in hunting or such. Uh, or when I'm with a group or I just, I don't mind and I need being seen and I need higher visibility to, in the group, prevent people from tripping over guidelines. Guidelines. So lots of different variety with paracord. You can go all the way down in size. This is a good way to go. Here's the four step, my pitch kit. I have some extra Paramax. I have paracord for Ridgeline. I have my tie-out guy lines and Prusix made out of paracord in 275. And then I throw an extra spool of microcord in for lashings or anything extra I have to do. So that would be all the cordage I would bring. Seems like a lot, but being organized like this before you go is great. Uh, when you get down to the extra level, uh, extra cordage level, you can grab a spool of microcord, many different colors, bank line or twine. All right, so that's what we have to say about cordage. Start putting a kit together based 80% around what you already know you're going to use. I'm going to make a shelter. I'm going to need to hang things and bear bag things. need a little extra rope. For the unforeseen, I just throw that extra bit of cordage in my bag and I'm all set. Okay. Hopefully you like that. Leave some comments below, some other cord options or ways you organize your extra cordage uh, and rope. And uh, like the video if you liked it and subscribe to the channel. Hopefully the more we share this, the the the, the faster we can get revenue to the charity and uh, turn on the notification bell. That's a, another important one. So that's it.